start by talking about really what a proportion is. So a proportion is two ratios that are equal to each other. So um, you would say, and you've seen this before, as you've seen like, you know, three sixths is equal to four eighths. These are equivalent guys. You might say um, one twelfth is equal to two twenty fourths. These are uh, proportions because it is one ratio equaling the other, as in these examples. Now the second question that's up here is, well, how do you know if ratios are indeed equal to each other? Now, obviously the ones I've done here are obviously equal, but the way you would test it is that you would use a cross multiplication here. So as you cross multiply these guys, in this case we get 24, and in this case we would get 24. So this is the establishing that they're equal. In a similar way, if we did this uh, going this way and this going this way in a cross multiplication environment, we would get actually in this case 24 equals 24 as well. If they balance, then indeed those two ratios are equal. Let's take a look at this question first. So the way you would approach this is you would multiply those out. 5x equals 6 times 15. And then you would go about dividing 5 into this group. And when you do that, uh, you get this value here uh, and it solves out to be 18. One of the things that I would suggest you do, think about it, is if there was an 18 back in here, do you see how this is pretty easy to test as well? That 5 times 3 is 15, 6 times 3 is 18. In the second one, we would do 3 times x, right, going this way, and we would do 6 times x minus 6. The key to this one is that you would distribute this into this position. So we get 3x equals 6x minus 36. Let's move this to the other side. We get minus 3x equals minus 30x, 36, sorry, and x equals uh, 12. Now again, uh, testing this could work out nicely. If you put in a 12 here, basically you're doing 6 over 12, which is a half. And if you put in a 12 there, 3 divided by 6 is also 1 half. In this final situation, we would multiply across, cross multiplication, and get 2x, and we would get 21x minus x. Uh, again, I would gather my x's by adding an x to both sides and then solving for x equals 7. Very simple mathematics. Work problems like this come up all the time. So let's look at the ratio of boys to girls. Here it provides that particular ratio. And then it tells us that there are 20 boys in the class. So the idea is let's kind of compare our boys to our girls. So here we would say 4 is to 3. And then we would say, so this is our boys, this is our girls. So then if we have 20 boys, that would go on the top. And we're looking for the number of girls. So this provides us, uh, again, our cross multiplication situation. And we would solve this and we get 4x equals 60 and divide both sides by 4 and we get 15. There are 15 girls in this class. This ratio could be set up a couple of ways just to show you. You could have said girls to boys and then the x would have been in the numerator, and then the 20 would have been in the denominator. You just have to keep things lined up. If you're going girls to boys, you must do the same thing on the other side. Here again, we have that same ratio, boys to girls. Here is that ratio. Something different happens here. They tell us how many students are in the class, not how many boys or how many girls there are. And a way to think about this is this is a total so we might want to adjust this value to represent a total as well. Let's make this into a total. So if we are finding how many girls there are, uh, we might want to say um, that we have, let's see, boys to girls. So in terms of a total, three parts are girls and there are four parts in total. So I've adjusted this to represent a ratio of girls to the total amount instead of to a ratio to the boys. 
And again, just to show you the little trick there, one part is boys, three parts are girls. So if I said one is to four, that would be the number of boys to the total number in the class. If I said three is to four, as I did here, I'm saying the number of girls there are to the total. So now we can solve this quite easily because we'd say three is to four, that's the girls to the total, as we say, how many girls are there um, to the 28? And now we do that cross multiplication. We get 4x equals uh, 3 times 28. And we divide both sides by 4. And we get x, which happens to be 21 girls. So this one required us to do a little bit of uh, manipulation of the variable because we weren't going to find how many boys there were. We had a total of 28 in the class. This problem introduces a little bit about triangles and angles. We know that the angles in a triangle add up to 180. And so you can do this a couple of ways. You could say, okay, one angle is one part, two parts, three parts. And you could say, okay, there are six total parts there. So you could say, well, 180 degrees must be cut into six parts. And you find out that each part is 30. So now you can go back to that ratio and say, hey, okay, 1 times 30, there's your first angle. 2 times 30, there's your second angle. And 3 times 30, there's your next one. Notice that they are in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3, double and triple, just as we expect. And together they add up to 180. Another technique that I see happen quite a bit is you could do it this way. It's basically the same idea, um, but a little bit more formal maybe. This says one angle and the other and the other add up to 180. You get 6x equals 180. And guess what? You get x equals 30, just like the other situation. This one's very much like the last one, except these are ratios of sides. So the 180 idea doesn't work, but in this case, they told us that the perimeter was 63. So uh, again, we could add those parts together. Um, let's do it that way. That's just a, a nice way to do it. These all add up to, uh, looks like 11 and 7 is 18. So now we can say, all right, uh, well, how big is each part if we have 63 divided by the 18? And when you take 63 and divide it by 18, you get 3.5. Well, that's an interesting value, but that's perfectly fine. And so now we say the shortest side would be 3 times 3.5, and we get a total of 10.5 um, centimeters as our smallest side. They could have asked us for the largest, and then we would have used the 8, um, or the middle, and we would have used the 7. Again, just by way of other way to do it, and this is a comfort level for you. You could have also set it up this way and said all of these things add up to 63 and solved that way. This last kind of question does a little review of quadrilaterals that we've already discussed. And they give you a hint about um, a ratio of sides. And you've got to come up with who this is. Now the order they come in matters. So every other one is equal in terms of sides. So I can imagine maybe it would look like this. This is a ratio of three to one to three to one. And so for me, ah, a rectangle might be one of our answers. Is that the only answer? Um, oh, I know, how about somebody like this, where opposite sides are equal. These guys would be the one X ratio and these guys would be the 3x ratio. So a parallelogram would also possibly be one of our answers here. So we have two potential answers because this was about sides. And be careful about whether it's about angles or sides uh, matters greatly. And the order matters uh, as to it goes, you know, when you do this, it goes 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. Let me finish by helping you with two that aren't all that common. First, the kite. So the kite has a relationship, you can see, where there's one set of equal angles here at, the, at these two corners, and then these are different. So I don't know exactly the sizes of this, but maybe let's start here, and we'll just say that's a three. And then this one uh, says go to a five, 
This one, let's say, goes back to the 3, and this is something smaller. Now, these aren't exact values or anything, but mostly what you'd be looking for in a relationship like this is that there would be one set of congruent ones, and the other ones would be different. If you did that with sides, um, let's also notice with sides, it goes the same, the same, right, the same, the same, and then the next ones are also the same. And so, again, these aren't exact values, or not all kites have the same ratios, but what I'm trying to show you is you would get two of the same like this, and then you would get two of the same again in that order. The isosceles trapezoid's got some things going on with it, too. Let's first do angles. So we get two uh, large obtuse angles and then two smaller ones. So maybe we start with these obtuse ones. So maybe larger like 5, 5, and then down to 2, 2. Mostly what I'm uh, trying to get at is this idea that these will come in kind of pairs as they come in. And that's what helps us to know uh, the relationship. So like here's the 5, 5, and then comes the 2, 2 like that. In terms of sides, you will get um, two guys that are the same because of the isosceles. So it doesn't matter who you start with. Let's start with, um, say, this guy over here. And then there's another side, and then it comes back to the same side, and then something larger. Once again, these numbers are not exact in their form, but I'm just trying to show you what kinds of patterns you would expect to see. Good luck with it.